Welcome friends. This video is about automated DNA sequencing. In the previous lecture, we have discussed Sanger method of DNA sequencing, also known as dia-deoxy method or chain termination method of DNA sequencing. Sanger method is actually the very basic method of DNA sequencing and is efficient only for small DNA fragments. Okay, that manual sequencing method is slow and ineffective for sequencing larger genomes like if we want to sequence human genome by basic Sanger method it will take a lot of time it will take maybe years because the process of fragments reading in that manual method is very time consuming it is very tricky and tedious job so it will take a lot of time so to sequence larger amount of DNA or larger genomes, automated DNA sequencing methods are required. And one of them we are going to discuss here is based on original method of original Sanger method, that is chain termination method. Okay, so the automated DNA sequencing we are going to discuss here is based on Sanger method. It is based on original Sanger method of DNA sequencing there is a slight modification the original Sanger method is slightly modified for automated sequencing it uses the same principle and the same chain terminator molecules like dideoxynucleotides dideoxynucleotides like used in the original Sanger method they are chain terminators whenever they are incorporated in growing DNA strand the DNA synthesis stops okay but here in automated DNA sequencing, the exception is the dideoxynucleotides are tagged with different fluorescent molecules. All four types of dideoxynucleotides are tagged with a different colored molecule. So the products from each reaction tube will emit different color when they are excited by light. The requirements for automated sequencing are same is used in basic Sanger method like we need template DNA a DNA molecule we want to sequence nucleotides normal DNA nucleotides that is for adenine thymine cytosine and guanine primer DNA polymerase enzyme and dideoxynucleotides or chain terminators that are DDNTPs with a specific fluorescent molecule so all these components are put in four reaction tubes each with a different chain terminator molecule like we have tube 1 in which the chain terminator is adenine nucleotide or adenine nucleotide dideoxy adenine nucleotide in tube 2 let's say we have dideoxy thymine nucleotide as a chain terminator in tube 3 we have dideoxy cytosine and in tube 4 let's say we have dideoxy guanine nucleotide as a chain terminator so all the components except chain terminator in four reaction tubes are common the trick here is to produce all possible sized fragments of the template DNA or complementary to the template DNA let's say for example this is the template DNA which we want to sequence this is a DNA of unknown sequence okay let's say these are four nucleotides so in four reaction tubes we produce all possible sized fragments temp uh, complementary to the template DNA like a fragment may be a single nucleotide or a fragment may be two nucleotide long another fragment produced will be three nucleotide long and another fragment will be full stretch of the template DNA or four nucleotides after carrying out DNA synthesis in four tubes all the reaction products are mixed and electrophoresis together in the same lane on gel electrophoresis and this type of gel electrophoresis is used is known as capillary gel electrophoresis because here a capillary tube is used a very narrow lane is used for electrophoresis for, for separation of DNA fragments. 
The fragments are separated according to their sizes. As we know, gel electroporosis separate fragments according to their sizes. The smaller the fragment, I will go for test toward the positive pole. And the larger fragments, they stay behind, they stay on towards the negative pole. Okay. At the bottom of gel, a laser beam illuminates the fluorescent DDNTPs that are dioxynucleotides. Dioxynucleotides, which are tagged with a fluorescent dye, they are illuminated by a laser beam and the color emitted is detected by a detector. The detector identifies the color. Okay. The color information then passes to a computer and the computer is programmed to convert the color information to base sequence or DNA sequence. Okay. For example, if we have tagged dideoxycytosine with a blue color, then the blue color means that here the fragment is terminated with dideoxycytosine. Likewise, green color may indicate adenine red color may indicate thiamine and yellow indicates guanine you can see here how automated dna sequencing actually works these are various components the template dna the primer dntps that are normal dna nucleotides and ddntps tagged with a specific fluorescent molecule after carrying out reactions in four separate tubes the the products of all reactions are mixed and they are run through capillary gel electrophoresis so here at the base a laser source is placed which illuminates the dna products the dideoxynucleotides tagged with fluorescent molecule the laser source illuminate ddntps or the fluorescent molecule actually the fluorescent molecule and produce or emits a specific color. Let's say uh, dideoxyadenine is passing by and adenine is tagged with let's say green color. So a green color will be detected on this detector. Okay. This detector is connected to a computer and this computer is programmed to convert the color information into the DNA sequence. You can see here the computer create this chromatogram the peaks every peak is uh, representing a specific nucleotide okay so this is how we sequence larger genomes the reading step is automated by using color molecules fluorescent molecules so this was all about automated dna sequencing